There's no doubt that you've heard a lot lately about the switch to EMV chip-based credit cards, and you'll continue to hear more in the coming weeks and months for sure. It's a hot topic right now, and for good reason. This conversion represents one of the biggest changes in the history of payments. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of confusion and misinformation out there right now regarding exactly what EMV is and what everybody needs to do to be ready for it. In this short presentation, we're going to cover the EMV basics. What is it? Why is it needed? And what does it mean for financial institutions, merchants, and consumers in the future? First of all, what is EMV? EMV is named for Europay, MasterCard, and Visa, the three payment organizations that have been the force behind smart card technology since its introduction in Europe over 20 years ago. In fact, the first chip cards were produced in France all the way back in 1992. The idea is to replace the magnetic stripe on credit cards with a microchip. Now, if you think about it, the first magnetic stripe appeared on a credit card in 1971, and it's 44 years later, and we're still using that same technology here in the US. But internationally, there are nearly 2.5 billion chip cards already in use. In fact, the US is the last developed Western market to adopt chip card technology. Unfortunately, and perhaps as a result of having the weakest form of card security, the U.S. has borne the brunt of credit card fraud. Almost half of all worldwide card fraud occurs in the U.S., even though only 25% of card volume is U.S.-based. In fact, the U.S. has the most reported cases of card fraud in the world for each of the last five years. Eliminating the magnetic stripe in favor of a more secure method does seem to make a difference. Other countries adopting EMV have seen incredible reductions in fraud. In the UK, retailers have seen a 72% drop in point-of-sale fraud. And Canadian businesses have experienced a 91% reduction in chargeback volume. A big reason for this is that the magnetic stripe on a card really does allow for easy counterfeiting. Once a criminal obtains credit card information, he can simply embed that data into the magnetic stripe of a counterfeit card and use it pretty easily in the retail environment. EMV chip cards keep data more secure by storing it on an encrypted chip that's embedded into the card. When inserted into an EMV-capable card reader, the data is transmitted using a random string of cryptographic keys known as a token. The token actually passes through the terminal and is translated on the back end by the processor, meaning that no sensitive cardholder data is left with the merchant on their terminal. And each transaction generates a unique token so even if the transaction data were somehow obtained, it could never be reused. And creating counterfeit cards is no longer a simple proposition, as criminals would need to find a way to spoof or recreate this encrypted microchip that's embedded into the card. Now after 40 plus years of swiping our cards, the EMV transaction may take a little getting used to from the consumer's point of view. As you can see in this image, the card is no longer swiped, but instead inserted into the reader, where it will stay throughout the transaction. When the transaction is over, the terminal will prompt the user to remove the card from the machine. Now, in the early stages of this transition, cards will likely have both magnetic stripes and EMV chips. And the first generation of EMV terminals have the capability to accept both forms of this payment. But if a card containing an EMV chip is swiped in an EMV-capable terminal, the machine will not accept it and prompt the user to insert the card into the machine instead. EMV payments do come in several forms. While at the moment the primary usage will be chip-enabled cards, the same EMV technology can be used in other devices. There's been an increased emphasis lately on contactless payments, thanks mostly to the introduction of Apple Pay, which allows iPhone users to pay for purchases using their phones or Apple Watches. Android Pay, a competitor of Apple Pay, has also been recently announced. The encryption and tokenization process is pretty much exactly the same for physical card transaction. The only difference is that the data is transmitted using near-field communications, or NFC, a low-powered radio signal. This basically requires the phone and terminal to be almost touching to transmit the data. As smartphones become a more and more integral part of our lives, we'll likely see more and more contactless payments in the marketplace as a part of this EMV transition. So where do we stand in the EMV conversion process? Although many people are just hearing about it now for the first time, the EMV conversion process has actually been underway in the United States for many, many years now. Processors were required to have their systems updated for EMV by the end of 2013. And at this point, 
all major processors are now equipped to handle EMV transactions. Card issuers, particularly the major banks such as Chase, Bank of America, Capital One, and Citibank, have begun sending EMV cards to their customers already. Smaller issuing institutions such as community banks may take a little longer to convert to the chip process, but by the end of 2015, it's estimated that about 63% of cards in the marketplace will contain an EMV chip. By the end of 2017, just two years later, that number is expected to have reached 98%. As I mentioned, cards are currently being issued with both EMV chips and magnetic stripes, but issuers will begin eliminating the stripes possibly as early as 2016. The final phase of the EMV conversion process will shift to the merchant. By October of 2015, merchants will be expected to accept EMV chip cards at the point of sale. For many businesses, this may require some new equipment capable of handling EMV transactions. But the consequences of being unprepared can be dramatic for merchants, as new guidelines will be in place that will determine how financial liability will lie for fraudulent credit card transactions. Currently, liability for most point-of-sale card fraud lies with the card issuing bank. However, after this October deadline, any merchant not using EMV-compatible equipment when presented with a chip-enabled card will be fully liable for any fraud that occurs as a result of that transaction. Now, this could be a potentially crippling expense for a business, and it can be avoided by simply making sure that all equipment is EMV-ready. Hopefully, we've shed a little light on the basics of EMV. The Finet team has been preparing for this EMV transition for many years now and firmly believe in ensuring our partners are informed. Our team is always happy to answer any and all questions regarding EMV or any payment services. Visit us at finetsolutions.com or call us at 800-487-5577.